All right, folks. I've got another little video here helping out a viewer. Now, this viewer, his name is RPG39. And he asked an important question, and it's one I didn't really consider to uh, talk about in regards to painting an M1A. Uh, he said here, he said, help me out. There's his comment here. He said, help me out here. I have an M1A and a walnut stock currently. I'm thinking about ordering a composite stock and painting it. My concern is is this. Will the paint from the composite stock rub off and get on the actual M1A? So if I were to then place it back into the wooden stock at a later date, you could tell, you could never tell I had it in a painted composite stock. Basically what I'm asking is, does the paint rub off from the stock or from the stock rub off and stain the receiver and barrel to the M1A? So basically what he's asking is, is he's got two stocks for his M1A, or currently has a walnut stock for his, and he's wanting to be able to switch out between his walnut stock to a synthetic one in camo color, the synthetic one being camo. And he's wanting to know if, you know, having a painted stock for the M1A would run the risk of getting paint on the physical action of the M1A. And I told him, basically what I'm going to tell all of you is no, not really. I mean, let's grab a light here and look on the bottom of my M1A's receiver. See up around the edges, it's really greased up right there. See all the grease? See? This is run down here through. Still looking on the underside here. There's no paint up around in here. Let me move my light. My light's not really the best, but it, it makes it out. There's no paint on the underside of the receiver. So it's good there. Now back up here on the sides. See right here on the sides. See, I'm going to look right here at this corner right here along the bottom because this is what it right, rides closest to the stock that there is brass markings and as you can see here on the bolt carrier or not bolt carrier a uh, charging handle that there's brass strikes there too that's completely normal you shoot your M1A's a, a lot that will happen but as you can see no paint and up here along the Operod charging handle there's no paint see because this part right here is exposed no paint along through there and out here on the stock ferrule there's no paint as well and then there might be like a little bit right in there like see again like right here yeah there's like some green right there on the stock ferrule maybe just a touch let me flip the rifle over and we'll look at the other side all right around here on the other side of the receiver, same spot, down here where it's closest, where it rubs the stock. There's no paint. None. And none along this uh, synthetic handguard either. And I told him, I told him that if you keep the stock away from the rifled action, like you let the stock dry, like completely dried, just like you know, after you're done paint, painting it, let it sit for a day or two, however long it's needed, till the paint is no longer tacky, and you need not risk paint getting on your actual M1A receiver. We will look at the stock too here in a minute, but I'm just showing the action because he had uh, some, he had a lot of concern about you know paint rubbing off onto the actual action of the M1A, the barreled action, the barrel and receiver. And I'm just doing this to uh, show all of you and to uh, let him see that I have no paint on mine. I'm alleviating everyone's fears. So you no need, there's no need to uh, worry about it. You just got to keep your stock away from your action. My fingerprint rubbed off right there. I got a lot of grease on this M1A.
it runs. But uh, as long as you keep your stock away from your action, your receiver of your M1A, you won't have to worry about it. Just let it dry completely until the paint on it has set and it's not sticky no more. But I will show I will show you all where paint did rub off on my M1A. All right, here's my M1A's trigger group. Here's the back end of it. That's where the trigger guard locks up and locks it into the gun. As you can see there, that's got some wear where I've taken the M1A apart several times. And I told him the only place I got paint on it was right here. Right here where the mag latch is, you know this metal part here where the magazine lockup is on the receiver and that's the only place I got paint. As you can see there's some of the old paint, old camo color that was on my M1A stock for years. It's a uh, like a green and desert earth or flat dark earth. Uh, camo pattern there just green and brown and it's got some green over here but that's about it that's about the only that's the only place on the entirety of my M1A you know the metal actual like receiver action trigger where paint got on it I'll show you the underside as well I'm hoping this is picking up good because my cameras uh, I've got my camera slightly angled but yeah, no paint on the outside. Here's the trigger guard. Yep, so it's all good. This is real greasy too. My my uh, trigger group is. See the the grease I use. It uh, it like it self lubricates after I apply it. It just keeps like running and running and running. I mean, I really need to kind of clean my trigger group, but I haven't really broke my rifle down in a while. I try not to do that as often. They say not to. Because, you know, they say... Now they say, I've been told by several people that if you break your M1 M1A down like a hundred times or so, or, you know, do you just do it religiously, that it will wear your M1A out. But I've had my M1A taken apart. I've taken it apart to this level right here dozens of times, and I haven't found any... Uh, uh, major, I haven't found any uh, accuracy loss at all doing this, just breaking it down like it is right here. The only way I could see, uh, you know, viably, you know, taking an M1A down, breaking it down is if you goof up your trigger group here somehow where it doesn't lock back up properly. Like you take it apart and you goof this up somehow, or you damage your stock some way like you bend something or twist something on it when you take it apart that's about the only way I'd know that the only way I could think of that you would uh, mess up your M1A and, and then there's the glass bedded M1A actions and that's a whole different story um, I'm kinda getting off topic here as it is figured I'd just drop that little information there um, but yeah as you can see no no paint on the physical rifle itself. So RPG 39, you have no need to worry. And, uh, you know, go ahead and paint your M1A stock. I've got both my videos. Well, I've got four videos on how I painted mine. Uh, the first two are the original paint job that was on my M1A. And the second two are my updated uh, current camo scheme on my M1A so uh, you know take from those what you will paint your stock however you want and need not worry and uh, I will uh, say this because I gave him this advice too but I you know since I'm making this a video now I'll give everybody else the advice if you're going to paint your M1A stock <clears throat> uh, be sure to wipe all the grease off of it and I'll go ahead and switch over to the stock and we'll talk about it